In this video, we're gonna go over some of the best Streamlabs settings you can have for live streaming in Streamlabs Desktop. If you don't have Streamlabs Desktop and you wanna download it and follow along, I'll leave a link in the description to it so you can download it for free and follow along. So once you've got it open, we're gonna open up the settings, of course, and in here, you're gonna to want to navigate to the output mode, go to advanced, um, outputs over here on the left toward the top, um, and then click streaming, and then from here, um, what you want to do is make sure your encoder is set to your, ideally your graphics card if you have an NVIDIA graphics card especially. Um, you want to use this NVENC new encoder. This is going to be the best. Um, if you have to, you could try out or use the software encoder, which is on your CPU, but especially if you're trying to play games and actually use the computer at the same time, you're going to get much better performance out of the NVENC new um, encoder, which is a dedicated chip on your graphics card essentially um, so that uh, it's not really going to interfere with your actual performance while you're trying to do other things on the computer. Um, it's also just designed for streaming and, and encoding video essentially. Um, so that's really what you ideally want to use. So go ahead and select that. AMD does have its own uh, similar thing, which would probably be good as well if you do have that. I don't know what, remember what it's called, but you could definitely select that. For the rate control, you want to make sure this is on CBR, which stands for constant bit rate. Um, this is very standard and needed for live streaming to so make sure that's on cbr your bit rate's going to depend on your upload speed but generally um assuming most people these days have an upload speed of at least 10 or higher um, you're going to be able to put on about 6,000 bit rate here um, this is going to give you plenty of bit rate for good quality while also um, ensuring you're not going over any limits for instance twitch streaming has a limit of 6,000 if you're not partnered I believe so 6,000 is just fine. You could even lower this to like 4,000 or 5,000 um, if you're streaming at 1080p and you're still going to get decent quality um, if you do have to lower it down because your internet speed's you know, struggling to even stay around 10 um, or something like that. But just test your upload speed. Um, but for most people, you should be good to just set this right at 6,000. Your keyframe interval, usually you can just leave this on zero for auto. Certain streaming services, whether it's YouTube or Facebook or uh, Twitch are gonna have maybe a certain preference here, usually two. I've seen a lot is usually what they use, but you can just leave this on zero and it'll automatically set it. Um, you shouldn't have any issues just leaving that on zero, no matter what platform you're streaming on. And then for this preset, I have mine on P7 for the best quality, um, but feel free to go down to P6 or P5. Um, it still maintains some good quality, but if your system's not top of the line, um, or not like a good solid mid-range and you're just trying to get the most performance, you're having frame drop issues or any kind of performance issues, this is definitely a setting you could drop down a little bit. Um, I think P6 is probably the best balance point, um, but if you do wanna have a really good quality, P7 is gonna give you, of course, the best quality. So just that's something you can test around with your system. And uh, if you don't have any issues on P7, it's gonna be the best quality. But if you do, maybe lower it down to P6 or P5. Um, you could even go down to P4, anything lower than that though, and you're probably gonna be sacrificing pretty significant quality. For the tuning here, you just want to leave this on high quality for the best quality, unless you're doing something that you really need low latency, meaning you can really get closer and closer to real time interaction with uh, your chat or your audience. Then you could try out one of these other settings, but that's a more specific thing. Most people, you're just going to leave it on high quality um, in that case. And then the multi pass mode, the two passes quarter resolution is going to give you the best balance between quality and performance. But if you do want to get the best quality, um, you can. You could go ahead and turn on two pass full resolution, but for most people, two pass quarter resolution is probably just fine. Your profile, you can leave this on high is going to be good. Uh, leave the look ahead off. Psycho visual tuning should already be on. Leave that on. Um, GPU, if you have multiple GPUs, which I'm sure most people don't, you can change that. But otherwise, just leave this at zero and it's going to use your default GPU. And then max B frames is usually just fine at the default value of two. That's it for the output streaming settings. Now, a couple bonus tips I'll give you is if you do go over into this advanced, um, I do like to turn the process priority to above normal, just make sure Streamlabs is getting all the resources from my computer that it needs to run smoothly. Um, also, if you scroll down here, uh, you'll find network. Now, I like to enable these two settings, dynamically change bitrate when dropping frames while streaming, as well as enable new networking code. I found for me, this eliminates any issues um, with my network connection and things like that, um, especially when it comes to dropping frames, which or skipping frames, especially 
Um, it's basically just going to automatically change that bitrate number that we set to 6,000 um, to avoid actually skipping full frames. It'll essentially just lower the quality if you do have a drop in your internet speed for a few seconds or whatever the case is. Um, so I find that to provide a better uninterrupted experience where at least the audience can still hear you even if the quality drops off and then it'll pick back up um, as your internet levels back off again. Um, so that's a big thing because if it skips frames, it's just, it looks really bad and it's like totally skipping uh, the images. So that's a bonus setting. I highly recommend giving a try. That's pretty much it for the streaming settings for Streamlabs desktop in 2025. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time.